Tiz. Hello. Welcome. Thanks, Sako. Okay. Um, let's do just a, a quick little recap. Who are you? What have you done this year? I'm Tiz, or Andrea Tyrrell. I am a powerlifter. Um, that's my main hobby. I'm also a firefighter and do army reserves. In terms of powerlifting, I started with Arif Hunter at ZAR at the start of the year, um, after moving up to Brisbane to take my role as a firefighter. And we have had a very successful 12 months, um, focusing on, as Arif says, getting that low hanging fruit <laughs> with growing the squat and deadlift. Um, we went to nationals after doing a competition, a local comp. And yeah, I've had a, a really great year. So you've done two two comps. Two this comps year? this year. Yeah. Yeah. Were you planning to do more, or was that pretty pretty on par with what you wanted to do? No, the goal this year was to get to nationals. Cool. Yeah, yeah. After so I didn't go to nationals last year because uh, the firefighter course started only a couple of weeks after, yep. and it was just a little bit too much, um, too bigger goals going on at the, at the same time. Yep. So I obviously prioritised my goal of employment. Cool. Um, so that meant this year was to go into nationals and I felt like I was a lot more ready for it this year, yep. mentally and physically. So yeah, the delay it, paid off. It requires a fair bit of a fair bit of work and dedication and everything. So yeah. you need to be in the right place. Yeah, mindset, absolutely. So. A lot of commitment. Yeah, nice. Um, your, your first comp went, went pretty well. I was there. Yeah. Um, I was helping out in the day, so I think you and, and everybody else that competed that day had a fair bit of success with it. Um, you were pretty happy with the results at that comp. Mm, yeah. Cool. yeah. Um, and you guys, in, in your last video, um, you spoke about a couple of the niggles and injuries um, that you had and you were working with a physiotherapist at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and the plan after your first comp this year was to introduce uh, some Pilates into your training. Yes, okay. yeah. Um, you and Arif have done that? We have, this year? Yeah. we have, yeah. I've seen you in here doing some pretty regular stuff. Yeah. How did you how did you find Pilates as somebody that's kind of used to more barbell and dumbbell work and you might have used like some bands and that before? Um, what did you find was different about Pilates? So I had never done Pilates. Um, I had heard of a reformer. Yep. I had seen one years ago, but I had never had any interest in it at all. In hindsight, I don't know why, yeah. <laughs> um, but it was just one of those things that, you know, there's only so much time you've got in the day, there's only so many things you can do, and it was just something that had never come up. I had done yoga before, yeah. um, so I was very interested in the more gentler form of exercise and the stretching and activation yep. and, and the mindfulness side, but had never gotten into Pilates. But yeah, Arif suggested it and we have been, I think we've, it's been over six months or so now and usually two sessions a week. Yep. So we've done a fair bit of work with it all. Bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like the effect that it's had is it has increased my mind-body connection and my ability for my mind to switch on and switch off and use yep. the right muscle groups. Nice. It has really cemented that, that so. line and it has transferred over really, really well to the lifting heavy weights. Yeah, yeah. Nice. yeah. It is, um, it's quite a, you, you can target really, really specific muscle groups mm. in particular types of movements as well. So I know with squatting, with deadlifting, like hip mobility is, is absolutely, you know, one of the most, I guess, important things. Yeah, yeah, um, particularly for sumo. Yeah. You've got to be able to get nice and wide. And one of the, what are the, you had a couple of injuries that you were, you were sort of dealing with over the time. One yeah. was QL. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. QL, um, Arif or Kelvin would have to give the, the clinical explanation, yeah. but what it felt like for me was, Intermittently, sometimes there was a reason for it. Um, like for example, you know, getting down into the garden, that bending down, getting up, bending down, yep. getting up. Um, that would jack it up. Sometimes it was just out of nowhere. I'd wake up in the morning some days and it'd be great. Other yep. days it wouldn't be so good. But um, yeah, my QL was playing up and my hips were quite tight as well. Mm -hmm. So we're between Kelvin, my physio, who yep. um, went to uni with the reef. Um, his little, 
wild card in there. <laughs> he finally threw me. Um, between Kelvin's physio and the Pilates, um, yeah, we've got a real winning formula with managing um, my lower back yep. that had been a drama off and on for two to three years. Okay. So yeah, quite a long time, and it and it was coming and going. I'd seen so many different people for it, um, but yeah, now we've got a real winning formula. And the other thing I had was um, shoulder and a shoulder injury yep. from CrossFit years and years and years ago mm -hmm. that still flares up every now and then. My bicep tendons. Yep. Um, but again, yeah, I think doing the Pilates activating particular muscle groups has transferred over to yeah because yeah. i noticed you've been you were sort of doing about half an hour of pilates before some of your heavier sessions in yeah. here um twice a week with those sessions what did you feel like walking into some of those sessions especially coming coming up closer to that second comp mm -hmm. like how was your body feeling um just on a daily basis you know walking walking under the bar after you've done those couple of sessions? I got a really good balance of more flexible and mobile, but also more more primed, more more ready to work. A really, really good balance of the two. Um, I think I'm the sort of athlete who likes to be a little bit more mobile and, and flexy than the average powerlifter. Yeah. Uh, and I really do enjoy stretching right out and doing lots of mobility. Um, and getting in and doing some of the specific stretches that you can do on the reformer has really aided in that. Yep. So I felt a really good balance of activated and relaxed and, and stretched out. So just easier to really warm up yeah. into some of your head. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, a lot smoother in how I moved. Because it's not, it's not common in powerlifting to really to see Pilates used anywhere. I think I've seen one other gym in Brisbane that, that kind of that does, that, using it. does that yeah, yeah. Um, because you're you're quite I guess quite an experienced lifter you're, you're competing at a pretty uh, high level only three only three years yeah. of powerlifting what you've achieved in those three years has been has been pretty amazing um, I would say what did you um what do you sort of what would you recommend to let's say somebody who's like a beginner mm. coming into it because you did you start off with some of these injuries or did they sort of build up as you were getting stronger and heavier with your lifts? Or was it something that you'd already kind of had leading into powerlifting? I came into powerlifting with dodgy shoulders. Yep. That was a, an ex-crossfit injury. Um, however, it was funnily enough, it was changing the plates over on a bar, going yep. from my first warm up to my second warm up, um, that I ended up damaging a disc. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then ended up with the QL issue. Um, so that wasn't even lifting, it was you know, warming up. Um, but my recommendation for someone who's coming into the sport or, or junior in the sport is to get advice. You, you don't know what you don't know, but I think it's really important to, to do your research, to read and do and, and try and find out as much as you can, but be mindful that there's a lot of stuff out there that won't be particularly relevant to you and it's not gonna work for you. And different things work for different people. But if you are able to find a coach and, and or you know physio and whatever you need, yeah. if you want someone to write a program for you, invest in a coach yeah. and don't just find the person who you know puts heaps of stuff on Instagram or you know whatever it is but um, engage with them talk to them and find someone who you connect with on that deeper level yeah. um, because it's that way to be able to have a bit of that trust I think yeah yeah absolutely you have to understand one another yeah. they have to be open-minded and that's what a reef 100% is he's very very open-minded he will listen he will give advice um, he doesn't, you know, dictate or tell. He's, he's very, very good in that respect. So, yeah. yeah, my advice is to to take the time to find someone who right works for you. Because yeah, cool. it was it was pretty uh, it was fairly new for him to incorporate. Him and I had been doing Pilates for a while now. Mm. We've been sort of learning the repertoire of exercises and that. And you were almost like a not a guinea pig, but you're probably one of his top lifters who started incorporating the training, yep. the Pilates training into your lifting as well. Yep. And it seems to have made, made a world of difference. Yep. What did you find was sort of 
different in terms of working with, let's say, someone like myself, who's you know not a powerlifting coach. I teach p predominantly Pilates and like your general sort of strength and conditioning. Mm -hmm. um, in comparison to Arif, who's a, a heavy lifter himself, um, he's been at the top of the game for a while now as far as coaching and competing goes. Yeah. How did you find his training style with Pilates sort of, uh, I guess, complemented some of mine? Like, did you did you kind of notice that? he was a bit more specific to powerlifting with the way that he taught some of the things? Yeah, yeah, he has a really good understanding of what what you need to do, what, you know, what muscles you need to be switching on or switching off yep. for those specific lifts. Yep. Um, so, and I think he was very good at, um, you know, choosing appropriate exercises for the reformer. Yeah that will be relevant, you know, recruit the right muscles to the lifts as well. for, yeah. for the powerlifting lifts. Nice. Um, and he, you know, as, as someone who is kind of learning Pilates, but he knows powerlifting, yeah. um, I think he's, you know, taken a lot from your advice and been able to implement that really, really well. Yeah, because I, I saw some of your sessions after doing the half hours upstairs down here. Yeah. And it just seemed like everything was, was yeah, nicer. I felt a lot more even yep. as well on both sides. Yeah. And, you know, with your squat, bench and deadlift, you want to be even. Um, but, you know, the human body doing what it does, often you have, you know, little Spirals. things going on on yep. one side, not the other. Um, but that was one thing that Pilates has really helped with as well. In the, the you know, there's some moves that you are working on both sides, yep. some things that are just unilateral and yeah, he's incorporated some really good exercises to help balance things out. Nice. Um, leading into leading into your second comp, um, you had a, a couple of little hiccups. Yeah. You got my dog. My dog. dog. Um, she. There was no intention to bite. Yeah. However, I ended up with her tooth in my leg. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was a bit unfortunate and. Yeah, unfortunately, it meant that I missed my last big heavy set. So. And did you coming into the comp on the day, even though you hadn't been able to sort of, I guess, complete the perfect prep mm. for that comp? Yeah. Um, how did you feel your body was kind of reacting at the time? Oh. Coming in on that day, in comparison to let's say that comp that we did, was it February the first one? Um. Oh. Yeah, I think March or April. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How did you How did you feel coming into this second comp? Like, it's because you'd, you'd introduced something that was completely new to your training. Yeah. Um, you'd had a bit of a setback, but at the end of the day, you were sort of moving a little bit better throughout your, your training days. You're yeah. about to do nine big lifts in the day. Mm, um, yeah. Did you find that your mindset was a little bit different due to the change in your training as well? I felt we had had the best, I mean, aside from my dog, yeah. um, but we had had the best comp prep I've ever had. And considering it was only Arif and I's first comp together, yep. um, yeah, that was, a, that was a pretty big deal. Like we were, we were really primed, ready to go. Nice. And yeah, I guess it was a little bit of a risk to implement something new, yep. but not, you know, you don't, gain anything without trying new things. That's it. So, you, you said something similar in your in your first video with us. Yeah. That you've got to, to be successful, you've got to make sure that you're taking risks as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I guess, you know, introducing something which is really, really uncommon as far as the yeah. powerlifting world goes. Yeah, I think that very. Was a, it was a big step and I'm glad that, that you know, it's paid off. I hope that yeah. it sort of pushes other lifters, uh, whether you're a beginner, you know, sort of intermediate or advanced mm. to try and incorporate some of these things that are a little bit more gentle in the body to sort of get get some heavier lifts up as well yeah um, post comp so you, you've done the comp mm -hmm. Arif and you are going to discuss the day itself a little bit more and how you, how you think you went um, in terms of the lifting yeah um, your recovery after the comp so I know that generally you know you'll probably have about about a week off training most of the time after you do a big comp like Usually, that? Usually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How did you find your body was sort of pulling up um, after this last comp? That you I, I didn't feel like I had competed, to be honest. Um, I felt absolutely fantastic and ready to go. Uh, and I think I was back in on Wednesday, yep. back on the program. And then I think it was that Saturday, so a week after comp, 
I did a 140 squat, PB'd by three kilos. So I did 137 at the comp, and then yeah, a week later did the 140. Nice. Um, and that's generally something that you would, I think even a reef would probably say like, don't do that. I would never <laughs> have done that, been able to do that in the past. Nice. Um, usually a solid week after a comp, my CNS is just absolutely yeah. wrecked. and. Just the thought of going into the gym and lifting, I want to curl up in a ball in the corner and go to sleep. Um, absolutely exhausted. But um, there was more in the tank, and I think we had really managed recovery really well leading up to comp. Nice. So it meant that, you know, coming up out of comp, we were still pretty, had, had some juice there. Ready to go. Yeah. But there is a big component of, of neuromuscular mm. sort of work that, that Pilates. Um, I guess it incorporates really, really well. Yep. So your, your central nervous system, that mind-muscle connection, um, it does improve a fair bit. Um, and then recently, so again this year, I think two weeks ago, yeah. you hit another piece. Yeah, yeah, a week and a half ago. So I said to Reef um, at the comp, but then we spoke about it more after comp, yep. I really, really wanted to hit a 160 deadlift yep. because that would then mean that in the three years that I've been powerlifting, so I started December three years ago, uh, I have gained 100 kilos, I love round numbers, being a little bit OCD. <laughs> <laughs> nice and even. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, 100 kilos across my three lifts wow. in three years. So I said, I need some extra pre-workout and we need to program this yep. in, so. That's a lot of work, man, that you've done. Yeah, three years. yeah. No, that's not Look. easy because it's quite hard to get three years of consistent lifting mm. where you're not really pulling up with sort of major injuries. Because um, I've coached a couple of these powerlifting clumps now and mm. seen a lot of powerlifters come through our gym at Zara Athletica here. Um, everyone seems to pull up with these little niggles and sometimes yep. it's the difference of you know not not completing some of those lifts on the day. So exactly. it's really, it seems to have really kind of taken you up to the, to the next level. Yeah, level. yeah. well when I started with the reef at the start of the year, I'm pretty sure my deadlift was 142. Yep. So yeah, to now crack out 160 a week and a half ago. A lot of weight in one year. Yeah, yeah, we've done really, really well. So um, leading into, into the next year, yep. are you, you're in a, off season period now, is there any plans for any other comps next year? In a, I guess a off season in yeah. that I'm still gonna train, be mindful of, you know, nutrition, recovery, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but no dates for a comp as yet. I kind of want to just have a build phase. Yeah. And yeah, it's been a big- Fine tune a little bit. Yeah, yeah, just kind of go back to the drawing board a little bit and just take some time to really refine things. Yep. Um, and I'd really like to go into my next comp and be confidently able to um, hit the 140 squat, 160 deadlift, and I would absolutely love to hit triple digits on a bench and that'd give me my 400. Shoulder so, mobility it is. Yes, yeah, yeah, nice. yeah. So is Pilates is something that you guys are continuing yes. to do? Yes, yeah, you're training? yeah nice. definitely. Just um, had a session then. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, we're, we're gonna maybe get it because Arif and I have spoken about your programming a little bit mm -hmm. and some of the issues that you've dealt with as well. So uh, we're gonna get back to the drawing board a fair bit and really try and fine tune some stuff. Yeah. Um, as far as powerlifting goes, there's the, the repertoire of Pilates exercises, you can kind of play with that machine any way that you want mm. and incorporate and kind of, I guess, invent exercises that are gonna suit your body and the things that you're dealing with as well. Yeah. Um, I know we've been, we've already been playing around with that. I'll usually run upstairs and have a look at what you guys are doing and fine tune some stuff as well. So I think the big plan for, for us is, I guess, for Arif as your coach and yeah. myself as um, you know, the Pilates instructor here at Zar, is to figure out, I guess, a bit more of a generic program for all powerlifters overall yeah. uh, that can be done. Because yeah. the injuries seem to be quite I guess quite the same injuries are quite common across mm -hmm. the board. Yeah. Uh, the amount of lower times back. I've heard <laughs> lower back jacked up, hips are jacked up, yeah. shoulders, shoulders are starting to lose mobility. Because mm -hmm. as you get stronger, you're you are tightening up more. You're becoming more and more rigid, and it's important to have that positional strength where you're yeah. able to get down into whatever position you need to, or or tighten up into whatever position you need to, where you're not really jacking up the joints any mm. further. So. That's kind of the big plan that, that we have. For yeah, nice. That's something we haven't even really 
I like it. I'm still getting the hang of the elephant one. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's a lot of avenues that we can explore, and I think um, I think hopefully Pilates will be something that we see more and more with like the general population, yeah. uh, even advanced sort of athletes like yourself who are competing at, a, at quite a high mm. level. Um, I think there's a, a fair bit of a fair bit of benefit to be gained from, from people across the board. Yeah, and the thing that's fantastic about it is the low risk of injury. Um, you, like pretty much anyone, yeah. I would imagine, you know, regardless of what injuries, age, etc., what your history is, um, it's something that pretty much anyone yeah. can do. It's it's a very so, daunting. Like when you look at that machine, it's almost like, man, you need like you know two degrees. To yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> so a few few things going on. What have you found as you've sort of um, as you've been doing it more and more? Mm. Have you found that you're more comfortable using that equipment, or you kind of feel like you're more at home with the Yeah, equipment? yeah, well, yeah. I I try and come in a little bit earlier yeah. to get a few, particularly the mermaids. I really like doing the mermaids yeah. um, before anything else, just to get my back moving, yeah. um, and particularly for that lower back. Cool. Um, but yeah, I feel a lot more comfortable with it now. Because I think that's what puts a lot of people off. They kind of, they just think, it's a, I know physiotherapists are good at sort of making Pilates seem like a really, really clinical yeah. type of tool, where it's yeah. only, you know, Very you're specialist. super, super injured, and there, there isn't really a place for it in you know, like a big, heavy, more hardcore sort of training system. Mm. Um, but I guess you're a really good example of somebody who's doing some pretty amazing things with, with the barbell uh, and you've incorporated and that. So yeah, getting the hang of a reformer. Yeah, we're pioneering the way for Pilates yeah. and Pilates. Yeah, I think it's good to have that balance. So, Excellent. yeah, that's what it's given me. And are you taking any time off over, over the Christmas break? No, I've just had six weeks leave from yeah. work. So Straight back on. Yeah, to, yeah, back from, back from a holiday and back into the gym. Right. And um, yeah, train through Chrissy. Excellent. So, All right. Yeah. I think that's a sort of good explanation of, of your year for now, and we're gonna we're gonna be adding a little bit to, to today's um, video log. Um, Arif and Tiz are gonna go through how they, you know, how their prep felt um, as they were leading up to the comp. What Arif noticed that changed um, in terms of the way that Tiz was reacting to some of the programs that he was writing, um, and then obviously, you know, what went on in the day and how Tiz performed and, and recovered after. So. Tiz, yeah. thank you. You've been a, pleasure. a huge part of, of my learning here as far as incorporating it, incorporating what I do to somebody who's at just, in my opinion, at that next level of, of lifting. Um, and I'm, I'm really keen to explore what we can do with yeah. Pilates and powerlifting together and just to sort of bring it to the forefront of, of recovery and, and I guess enhancing performance. Mm -hmm on the big yep. day when you're doing your, your big nine lifts. Yeah, so, exciting. Thank you and, and oh, thank good you, luck Darko. in the future. Yeah, it's been nice. awesome. One take, mother Hey everyone, my name's Arif. I'm here with Tiz. We're hey coach. Be, we're gonna be talking a little bit about Tiz's experience with her last comp prep, which was nationals, and how Pilates helped her through a few niggles and aches and pains. So, at the start of the year, we were sort of dealing with a few issues? Yes. What were we dealing with? I think the biggest one that you sorted out pretty quickly was how I approached a deadlift. Yeah. I was very in my head yeah. and I lacked confidence and I was very uncertain with how I approached the bar and the lift and you saw that early on and basically told me to stop stuffing around and yeah. lift the bar. Yeah. Spending <laughs> um, a lot less time at the bottom of the lift and stop not wasting as much energy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that instantly made a massive difference. Yeah. So that that was a really good experience um, to, to to get that confidence yeah. from you as, as my new coach. Um, so yeah, that I think gave us a really good Base, uh, baseline or and you know. Step forward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I came to you with uh, niggling shoulders and yeah. the QL, yeah. which took yeah. yeah, a little bit longer to Yeah, the QL address. was interesting, and that's a little bit more of a chronic issue. Mm -hmm. And then referred you to Kelvin, and that seemed to help a lot, um, but it still persisted for a little bit. Yeah. And then once we started incorporating a bit of Pilates, which we've been doing for about four or five months, 
Yeah, from from the first comp. Yeah. So I think it's almost six months okay, or so, so now. Okay, a little bit longer. Yeah, December it's now. been quite a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's disappeared. Once we started doing a little bit more sort of lower back distractions, a little bit of um, lateral flexion like mermaids and stuff, it mm -hmm. seemed to help quite a bit. And yep. just relieving it just before you lift, and then we also did a little bit of stabilization exercises like scooters and lateral scooters. And then we incorporated a little bit of flexion with the band and stuff. Yep. And that seemed to help really well. And then just watching you do Pilates and then lift and then do Pilates again, mm. it was a good cycle mm. that kept you moving. And it sort of reduced the frequency you needed to see Kelvin. Yes. Which was good. Yep. Self manage a little bit better. Yeah, that's been a big part of it. The like it, it took a little while to kind of get things under control. Yeah. Um, but I definitely feel like I've just had a week away not powerlifting, um, only did one sort of stretch session. Yeah. But I can really feel like it's self-managed now. Yeah. So. And it was almost like a good indicator of how you were feeling, like for your session later that day, or if it was after your session, it was like, oh, how do your shoulders feel when you're doing roll down? Sometimes it felt a bit blocky. Yep. And that sort of cued, cued us to pay a bit more attention with, let's just say, pressing or mm -hmm. low bar. And then with, what else did you do? Positioning on the bar with the deadlifts. Do you think it was something you were approaching more confidently? Yeah. Do you think that was to do with you feeling more mobile anyway? If you just walk up and you don't like more mobile and I, I started learning how to use my posterior chain. Yeah. And that like, made a big difference. They worked hand in hand. Part of it was just having the confidence to do it to do it and also having the mobility as well. Yeah. And then I think the Pilates helped you with your body awareness, yep. like where it is with the start position and then where you're lifting, and that just gave you a little bit more confidence to give it some more home. Mm, absolutely. Like I still remember the first couple months or so doing the lateral scooters. Yeah. I I just didn't feel like I was quite in control re and recruiting the right muscles. Yeah. Um, every now and then, my lower back would be working sometimes it would be in a good way sometimes i could feel, feel that it was a bad way yeah. um, whereas now i feel like i'm able to get that position use the right muscle groups and yeah i don't get discomfort yeah and it also just helps a lot with just stabilization on one leg mm -hmm. like even though powerlifting is a bilateral sport doing stuff on one leg definitely helps yeah with the bilateral stuff yeah definitely I feel a lot more even on each side. Yeah. So. And then the control over the weeks that went through, it was just got better and better. Mm -hmm. Even though the weights with Pilates didn't increase, you just got better control with it. You yeah. got more out of it. You didn't have to sort of progress with weight like you do in powerlifting. The, no. The no. progressions just came. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And feeling a lot more even on each yeah. side. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's been really good to you know, do something that's got a different goal. Yeah. It's not so much about increasing the weight and, and pushing harder. Yeah. It's about being more competent and confident in, in the movements. Yeah. And it also taught me a little bit about how Pilates can benefit powerlifters as well. Because mm. it was a pretty good screening tool, I feel. Like I said, when you're doing roll downs, if it's a bit blocky, you can sort of work a little bit more. The prep, the lead up, yeah. was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Um, as you already said, yeah. it was the best, and like it was only our second uh, comp together. Yeah. But yeah, it was definitely the best comp prep that I've had since. Until? Until the day um, didn't quite go as planned. Yeah. But you know what? One thing that I have reflected on is regardless of the reasons why something doesn't go to plan, the reality is. Not everything is going to go to plan. Not every session is going to go as you expect it to. Yeah. Not every comp is going to go as you expect it to. Yeah. And, you know, having having a bit of a setback comp, yeah. I think was actually really good for me because I hadn't had one in the yeah. three years I've been competing. Really? Oh, that, you handled it pretty well then. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I felt like I didn't, but... I feel like with the lead up of the competition, your mm. numbers that you were hitting were really solid mm. and then it just didn't reflect on the day. Yeah. And then, even though it didn't show up on a day, the following weeks you ended up hitting what we wanted to hit, which was like a 140 squat. Yeah. 
and at the comp you only got 137. Yep. And it felt really hard. Yes. And then 155 deadlift. Yep. When we really were shooting for 158 or 160, mm. and then you achieved that two weeks ago, just before your trip to Tasmania. So ending the year on a good note. Yeah, absolutely. It might not be on the platform, but it was all on competition plates and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So you can sort of you say gym PBs don't count, but yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. starting to I'm starting to count them. Yeah, we'll make them count because let's just say if you only compete once a year, it's hard to sort of measure progress if it's yeah. only once a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So absolutely. We'll see how we go next year. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Now we have Pilates backing us and yeah. a little bit more lifts. We'll see what happens. Mm. Performance on the day. Oh. So how did you feel on the day? You said you didn't feel as strong and part of the reason was Wilkes? <laughs> I was adamant yeah. after our first comp in April, whenever it was, yeah. um, and doing some number crunching, if I had been 200 grams lighter, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have got best female lifter. Um, I had this idea that I'll get nice and light yeah. and, and give that a go. And I'm a big believer in trying different things because yeah. you never know unless you give it a go. Yeah. And you know, Pilates has paid off well and truly. So, you know, nothing lost, nothing gained. Um, so yeah, I got nice and light on the day and warming up, I felt absolutely fantastic. Like I, I particularly remember warming up on my squat and I felt so, I felt, I felt strong, I felt, smooth in my movement yeah. it, it moved really really well positioning was was really good and i think the pilates helped with that and just making yeah. sure you weren't too fatigued on the day yeah but once there was like 90 95 percent on yeah. the bar there but was then no gas in hitting the hitting that top end yeah. for all three lifts yeah it just wasn't there That's right. but yeah so what happens now we just know come in a little bit heavier. Yeah. <laughs> let Pilates do its thing. Yeah. And then hit all those numbers that you hit in the gym at comp. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, it definitely has um, shown me how important it is to prioritize feeling good on the day yeah. and not not tweaking too many things. Yeah. But there's only so many variables that you can adjust in that last, you know, couple of days or so before comp before it starts having a negative impact. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, not not be Don't tweaking. Don't too much. Yeah. Just weigh in as heavy as you can. Yeah. Lift as much as you can. Yeah. And then let the total do the wilts. Yes. Let the total do the talking. Yeah. yeah lesson learned. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. You know, I think you knew that you were like, nah. yeah. but you you let yeah. me give it a go. Remember when you told me what you weighed in at? I was just like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were really happy and, and I, then I was confused. Yeah, like, yeah. No. And I didn't understand yeah. why, like in hindsight, yeah. I didn't even really pay too much attention to why you were like, yeah. why have you done this? Yeah. I'd heard so many coaches say before, um, mass moves mass, yeah. or a variation of that statement. Yeah. And I guess I had never really appreciated it yeah. and understood what it meant. Yeah. But yeah. So, Definitely. Right. 2021, mm. a year, big year, hopefully. Yeah. Yep. Once all this pandemic rolls over, yeah. more yep. pumps open up, there'll be more options. It'll be, yeah, yeah, exciting. Yeah. So you said you didn't really want to think too much about a comp next year, sort of just train. Yeah, not at the moment. I'm yeah. keen to, with my partner being deployed, yep. um, I'm keen just to, I guess, have a bit of an, an off season, either that I'm still training really hard, Prioritizing all the good things, nutrition, recovery, etc. Yeah. Um, but I just, I just want to not have a set date in mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just train to train, yeah. train to enjoy it, yeah. and just kind of get back to basics a little bit without the stress and pressure of a comp prep and then a comp. Yeah, and like um, I said as well, like if you're feeling good, like within four to six weeks, we can pretty much peak for a comp anyway. Yeah. If one lines up well with. Date. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I'm like I'm certainly not saying I, I don't want to compete for yeah, a long a time. Yeah, yeah, I, I do want to compete again, but at the moment I just want to just have some time to yeah, just train to train enjoy lifting again. Yeah, without the without the pressure and expectations. it will be good. That's mm. when a lot of the best gains come, yeah, and then when it's time to switch on and kick yourself into prep mode, you can. Yeah, it's there, ready to go. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> can you see the rain? Yeah. All right, so it's 
been a year since I've been at Zaha, just over 12 months. Um, it's been an interesting journey. I've learned a lot as a coach and as a practitioner. Um, one of the main things I've learned or added to my toolbox is Pilates. Pilates has been really helpful and it's changed the way of thinking with movement because it's just way different to just general lifting or general rehab. Um, there's a lot more stability with it. It's a lot more of a longer set versus like pumping out a set of three or four. Um, some exercises can take one and a half minutes and that really challenges your body in a different way, even with breathing. Um, it's been interesting because with each person um, I come across with Pilates, I learn something new. Whether it's um, having debilitating back pain or just a small niggle in the back or shoulders. Um, it's definitely interesting as I've been learning it on a needs basis. So I've been learning basic stuff and then I've just been expanding on it as I need. So it's been good. With each new person that um, comes through, I'm learning a little bit more. And it, I can definitely see the benefits with Pilates and then incorporating it into a exercise routine. A good example is with Tiz. With Tiz, it's helped a lot with a QL. It's definitely helped mobilize it and manage it. And um, the other injury or niggle it's helped deal, dealt with is her shoulders. So with one of the exercises in particular, roll downs, um, it's more of a back exercise, but when the back's feeling really good, the limiting factor or where you'd feel a bit niggly is the shoulders as you're sort of reaching forward, getting a good stretch. And that just gives us a little bit more um, of an insight of how she's feeling and that gives a good indication of how the future sessions will go. Um, another one is Ritesh. Um, sometimes he's, he'll come in with some pretty bad back pain and we just um, usually I wouldn't be that comfortable with going to such a low level of exercise but with Pilates it can be scaled back as easy as you want or it can be um, progressed as hard as you like so with Pilates it's given me a good variation to just um, a bit of floor work and there's plenty of interesting things you can do on the reformer. Um, not only stabilization exercise, there's a lot of strength exercises that you can do as well. So Ritesh has given me a good um, canvas to work with, with how to manage more sort of acute injuries. 2021, um, the main thing I want to work on is expanding my knowledge on Pilates and a few other training concepts and philosophies. I feel like I want to keep learning as a practitioner and as a coach and bring as much as I can to the clients I'm working with. Pilates being one of the main ones I want to work with. Looking forward to helping you guys with Pilates and sorting out your mobility issues and any sort of core issues you might have. It's been a good year. Looking forward to building on it in 2021. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We'll catch you next year.